Hey, welcome back. We are at the beginning of a waves unit for a physics class or a physical science class or even as a foundation for a AP physics class. And I need to talk about two properties of waves today because they are important foundationally for a lot of other ideas that come up. So the first idea is called interference. So you can have constructive or destructive interference depending on what side of the center axis so take a look right here. This will call the center axis right here for this wave, right here for this wave. So if it's on the top side or the bottom side, if they're both on the same side of the center axis, both waves are on the same side of the center axis, they will constructively interfere. And if both waves are on the opposite sides at that same place in time, then they will what's called destructively interfere. And the resulting wave is actually going to be smaller than the two waves that go into making that destructive wave. In the constructive case, the resulting wave for that brief moment of time is going to have a greater amplitude than either of the two waves that go into the construction. So that's what we mean by constructive interference and destructive interference. So this is a property of waves because they're not true objects. Like generally solid objects don't just pass right through each other. But waves can do that. Waves can easily pass right through each other. So in that sense, they're not like a regular object. They are more like disturbances of energy through objects, through matter, or even through nothing at all. They are just kind of disturbances of energy spreading out. All right, let's continue and think about what we're talking about here. So I want you to take a look at this image. This is a very good animation here. And this animation shows the blue wave moving past the green wave. And you have the red wave as the resulting wave. And at sometimes you can see that the resulting wave is completely constructive. And sometimes you can see the resulting wave is completely destructive. You can also look at the three dots in the middle there to help you to understand what's going on. And I want you to think about when is the situation completely destructive and when is it completely constructive? The resulting wave is going to be completely constructive when the crests from each wave line up and the troughs from each wave line up, as you see in the image in the left, for instance, too. And it's going to be completely destructive when the crests and the troughs line up at exactly the same time, as you see in the image on the right. All right, so let's continue. With these, you can actually do problems. You can do physics type problems. And if you introduce numbers for the amplitudes here, then you can literally add them together. So this is actually pretty easy. If this is a little tough for you, just ignore the first set of data here and use the second set of data. So you could say, this is going to be our x axis. That's going to be our amplitude of one right here. Our x value is right here, and our y value is going to be right here. So you can see what we're talking about. If we have those be at the same place at the same time, the sum, the amplitude here for the purple dot, is just going to be literally the sum of these two things. And that kind of makes sense. So you're just going to add those two numbers together to get the resulting value. Now, these are going to be considered to be positive amplitudes. Over here, you're going to have negative amplitudes. And if I look at a second point right here, you've got a positive one and a negative one amplitude. You add them together. What's the result of a positive one and a negative one? Well, that's going to be zero, right? And so at that point in time and space, you've got a zero amplitude for the resulting wave. All right, let's talk about one last concept with waves, and that is what's going to happen with wave reflection. So this is just another wave property that we haven't gotten to yet. And so if you have a flexible boundary, so for instance, if you have a rope that is loosely tied to a ring stand in a class, and you flick the rope, and so you have a wave pulse travel down towards the ring stand, and it's not really tied on tightly, what's going to happen is the wave that is going to be reflected back is going to have the same amplitude that it came in with. Whereas if the boundary is fixed, like if the rope is tied securely to the ring stand itself, the reflected ray is actually going to be inverted is what we say. So it's going to be like flipped upside down. All right. And that does it for our introduction to superposition, how to handle problems like that and wave reflection. So Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, let me know. And I'm going to be covering all of the major concepts for physics throughout the year. Take care and have a great day.